process of meiosis. Interphase occurs in the synthesis phase of the cell cycle. Within interphase, the DNA is replicated, creating two copies of each chromosome within the cell called cystochromatids. Once the DNA has been replicated, the paired centrioles that are contained within centrosomes present in the cytoplasm, also known as organelles, duplicate them, begin extending microtubules that will later form the myotic spindle. Cystochromatids remain attached to the centromere and, and condense, leading into prophase 1. Prophase 1 is the longest and most complex phase of meiosis, totaling around 90% of the meiotic process is spent in prophase 1. Prophase 1 begins with the condense of chromatin to form chromosomes. After this has taken place, the movement of sister chromatids take place, creating homologous pairs which lie side by side in a process called synapsis, which in turn forms a tetrad. This homolog these homologous pairs share similar but not identical genes. Once the homologous pairs have been formed, the second event of prophase 1, crossing over, can occur. During crossing over, a physical exchange of chromosome segments between the nodes and sister chromatids occurs at the chiasmata side of crossing over, which therefore increases genetic diversity. Telomeres ensure that the homologous pairs remain anchored in place while crossing over can occur. Prophase 1 is ends with the nuclear membrane disintegrating and the centrioles moving to opposite poles of the cell. As the centrioles move, they extend spindle fibers that form myotic spindle. This leads us into prometaphase 1. In prometaphase 1, the myotic spindle is fully formed and the sister chromatids is attached to the myotic spindle via the kinetochore, which is a complex proteins that are assembled at each centromere. During this process, homologous chromosomes remain aligned so that a pair of sister chromatids is attached to only one pole by the kinetochore microtubules. Once this process is completed, we are now taken into metaphase 1. During metaphase 1, the pairs of homologous chromosomes, now as tightly coiled and condensed as they will be in meiosis, become arranged on an equidistant from each other the poles of the cell called the metaphase plate. Due to the independent assortment, this alignment is completely random, which allows for great forms of genetic diversity. Once the homologous pairs have been moved to the metaphase plate, anaphase 1 begins. During anaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes are pulled by the spindle fibers are pulled towards either poles of the cell. During this process, the chromatids remain attached to the centromeres of their respective hom homologous chromosomes. Once anaphase has been completed, telophase 1 begins. Meiosis 1 ends with telophase 1, where the chromosome decondenses and the nuclear membrane begins to form. During the telophase 1, cytokinesis 1 commences and begins to separate the cytoplasmic material. Once the cytoplasmic material has been mainly separated, a clearish virus separating the remaining cytoplasmic material and two haploid daughter cells are formed. This marks the end of meiosis 1. Meiosis 2 begins with prophase 2, where the exact process that occurs in prophase 1 occurs. Once the centrioles have been duplicated within each haploid daughter cell moved to either pole, sister chromatids have condensed, nuclear membrane has dissolved, and spindle fibers have formed, prometaphase 2 begins. In prometaphase 2, the exact same as prometaphase 1, where the development of each of the sister chromatids and spindle fibers attaching to each of the sister chromatids via the kinetic or microtubules. Once this process has been completed, metaphase 2 can begin. This 2 is the exact same as metaphase 1, where the spindle fibers align the sister chromatids on the metaphase plate in either daughter cell. Once this has been completed, anaphase 2 begins. Anaphase 2 is the same as anaphase 1, where the spindle fibers pull the sister chromatids apart and pull the respective chromosomes onto opposite poles of each daughter cell. Once each chromosome has been pulled to either pole of the daughter cells, telophase 2 can begin. Phase 2 marks the end of the meiosis 2 process. Telophase 2 is the exact same as telophase 1, where cytokinesis 2 begins to separate the cytoplasmic material. Once the cytoplasmic material has been mainly separated, the nuclear membrane begins to reform around each sister chromatin and begins to decondense into new strands of DNA. Within the new nuclear membrane, a nucleus forms, eventually forming into a nucleus. Once this process has been completed, a cleavage fire separates the remaining cytoplasmic material through the final stages of cytokinesis 2, and four haploid daughter cells are now formed. This marks the end of meiosis 2. Meiosis in females is where the eugonia become my primary oocytes, which lead to developing embryos that we fertilize by polar body at the end of meiosis. Meiosis in males develop sperm through the use of spermogenesis, where the primary spermicide divides meiotically. Each secondary spermicide divides into equal haploid spermatids, and by the end of meiosis 2, spermatids are transferred into s and transformed into spermatozoa. These haploid daughter cells specialize into gametes, which can be either sperm or eggs that contain a single allele. After fertilization, these cells form a zygote, which then forms a child. The child receives half the and half paternal chromosomes. This splitting of chromosomes lead to genetic diversity within the child. Germline cells undergo meiosis to produce haploid gametes that fuse and form a diploid embryo that grows into an adult. Stomatic cells complete meiosis to proliferate. These cells aid in the growth and repair of cells within multicellular organisms. Pros and cons in meiosis ensuring the continuity of a species. Pros, the increase in genetic variation through the use of crossing over. The species can adapt to new environments due to the variation, giving them a survival advantage. Diseases are less likely to affect the population due to genetic variation. Cons, a mate is required for meiosis, therefore making meiosis timely and energy costly. It takes time to develop organisms through meiosis. Due to meiosis, my non-disjunction can occur in anaphase 1 or 2, leading to daughter cells being NAU ploid, where one has N plus 1 chromosomes and other with N minus 1 chromosomes. And finally, crossing over phase of meiosis, translocations can occur where a chromosome is broken during meiosis, resulting in a fragment becoming joined to another chromosome. How has meiosis ensured the survival of peppered moths through genetic variation? Meiosis has contributed strongly to the survival of the peppered moth through genetic variation. Through the exchange of the melodic phenotype carbon area, the peppered moth has been able to camouflage with its darker surroundings much more effectively than the moth with the phenotype of Typicalis. In doing this, it has allowed the moth to be more camouflaged from the selective pressure of the birds. Through the crossing over and the exchange of selections of non cystic chromatids within prophase 1 has allowed for the carbon area phenotype to be passed on between peppered moths. The genetic variation was needed within these moths. As the industrial revolution taking place, it was darkening the color of the trees through soot landing on them, making it easier for predators to see moths with the Typicalis phenotype and therefore eat them. As shown in the graph, over 1964 to 1975, the carbon area frequency rose dramatically from 0.0, .0 to 0 0.1. 
one to nine oh zero point nine to one between North Wales and Leeds due to the darkening of the trees. However, once the Industrial Revolution came from an end, the trees began to come lighter again, and the carbon area frequency dropped to a maximum of zero point four from the previous zero point nine to one, as the Stephen phenotype became the favoured phenotype.